G'day, fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in over on the east side of the map, playing as the English, it is Lucifron 7. On the opposite side of the map, in the color red, playing as the Chinese, it is Vortex. This game, of course, is part of Golden League. That is correct. We are here casting some Golden League. You guys know exactly where to find it. 15 GMT, Saturday, Sunday, all that good stuff. It will, of course, be live once again this weekend. I'm going to be casting it. I'm excited to see exactly how it goes. But this, of course, is also the fourth game in the series between these two guys, these two brothers, as they begin to battle it out. We're in the game four already. So with this game, uh, this is match point. If Vortex loses this game, that means Lucifron goes through and it's a clean sweep. He doesn't even, barely breaks a sweat going up against his brother, which is kind of crazy. Because when you think about it, not too long ago, you know, Vortex was considered to be one of the top three players in Age of Empires 4. And yet, here we are today, sitting, watching, as Lucifron is currently 3-0 up against his brother. So I'm excited to see exactly how the game unfolds here because this is a matchup I'm a big fan of, English versus China. And a lot of people would look at this matchup and think, English versus China, you know, that's a pretty good, that's a, that's a decent matchup for Chinese. Well, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. Uh, to be honest, I feel like the, the English are difficult to deal with. Their longbows are very effective against the uh, against everything that China's really got to throw, especially if it gets to the late game. If it gets to the late game, it's my opinion that English are actually a little bit stronger than China in the late game, just simply because Grenadiers, not really that useful up against, uh, up against the English, just simply because of longbows. Longbows always going to be able to sort of kite back towards the keeps. They've got that faster rate of fire and also their trebuchets are difficult. Uh, but uh, I guess that's, a, that's a question we'll look at when we get to it uh, an answer that uh, that we might not even need for this game uh, because these guys are very aggressive both of these brothers uh, are somewhat notorious for the fact that they both play very aggressive typically you're going to see shorter games out of these guys you're not going to be seeing those 45 minute you know slog fests like bcqd likes to play or you know, the Muslim will play things like that it, these are these games typically they're very short very cutthroat games but um, we'll have to see exactly how it unfolds with Vortex already jumping over onto wood. Four villagers on wood early. That is a bit more than normal. Typically, you would send the fourth villager out to... Uh, out, or, or three villagers out to wood, and then the next villager would go out to gold because you've got enough to drop down that mining camp. But obviously not going to be the case here for Vortex. Uh, instead, putting a bit more... A bit more villagers onto wood, so who knows? Maybe that maybe that signals that he's thinking about going for potentially a second town center. Uh, that could be an option, of course, on this map. This is King of the Hill. It seems like a pretty safe map to be running a second town center. Uh, the the obvious uh, the obvious issue that you're going to have is that you're going up against you're going up against uh, well this guy over here. Lucifer on seven, and uh, he, he's looking to get up to the next stage pretty damn quickly. This is quite a fast age up time. Uh, we can see that he's aging up with uh, with three gold villagers that have come over across. He's got five villas underneath the town center. That's all he's going to need uh, in, in at this early stage of the game. Uh, not going to be opening with any sort of men at arms or anything like that that we have been seeing out of players. Uh, and interestingly, both players opting for double scouts here. So even the English player opting for double scout. And the idea behind that for England is that he wants to be able to deny enemy sheep. It's not that he's going to be using those sheep. It's that he wants he doesn't want the Chinese player to be gathering up all those extra sheep that are out on the map because there are a lot of sheep to potentially gather uh, and he needs to make sure that those sheep are under control you know that, that, that they're not just sitting underneath the enemy town center underneath the enemy mill uh, but one of the interesting things to note here for vortex is just with regard to his positioning on the berries it's not the best position uh so typically berries they're, they're not going to spawn towards for whatever reason they don't seem to spawn towards the back uh you, you see how stone is back here you know wouldn't wouldn't you have loved to have your, your berries back here as as a as a chinese player wouldn't that be absolutely beautiful uh but unfortunately they sit right on the front and that's going to make it very very difficult uh for vortex going up against english longbowmen so i would expect that we're going to see and this can i just remark on how late this age up is coming through right now a little bit of uh i don't know whether this is miss macro it could be intense intentional um I, I i would be very tempted to say it is uh it is miss macro just because you, you will see players uh, myself included go up to about 600 food on the chinese uh but that that would be when you are supervising with a, a lot of villagers so you might think like two 10 or 11 villagers in the in the first age that that sort of thing but he's going to drop down the barbican I don't know how I feel about the barbican as well. It, it's it's in a bit of an awkward spot. I, I I can't help but feel well let's take a look at the range here that he's got here. 
It, it doesn't actually reflect because he's sitting at player two uh, in the slot, but I, I suspect Lucifer might be able to come stand up here. There's the option for him to come in even from this angle. I would have. It, it's tough because I think like a perfect Barbican would sit like right about there, but obviously you've got the cliff face, so it's going to be difficult for him to defend that. But he's got he's got seven villagers there working over time. So we'll tune in with Lucifer. And we'll see exactly how he's doing because he's got units heading across the map already. We can see he didn't unfortunately clear his path, so he's going to get hit by a wolf on the way and not actually going through the middle. I'm not sure exactly what his plan is he's heading over the top of the middle i guess it's just from the position that he's rallied uh but he we've also got a wall coming down to the south so nice little adaptation here this wall is going to be pretty helpful because it's going to limit the flow of traffic down here control that narrative a little bit uh, and uh, as a result, it means that this Barbican is going to be the only thing that stands between uh, between Lucifer and getting into the base. Uh, I'm just looking at this little sort of connection that we see here. I think units might be able to get across that, but the Barbican is going to be able to reach it. But if, if you're putting in six or seven longbows down through onto this area, uh, they should get through. Scout going to be coming out now for Vortex. Going to be looking to see exactly what is up. On Lucifer's side, we can see that he is looking to, to come on that north side. So obviously he spotted out that Barbican. He, he's looking to try and take away from that position. But we can actually see a bit of a smart wall coming in here from Vortex. He's already tapped away at these, but Village are going to be going down over on this side. It should be. Indeed, it does. Uh, very interesting arc on those arrows, just the way that they fall. The gravity hits them very, very quickly. Uh, but he, he's going to be taking away that last Palisade wall, just slowly trickling at it over the time um but uh yeah you can see that vortex has definitely got a bit of an open spot up towards this position and vortex actually going to be investing into horsemen and this is something that i always feel it's like it's very dangerous to do against england in my opinion uh just because you you can go into horsemen but you really have to be on the ball with your control and now we actually see those longbowmen moving in looking to apply pressure villager one going to be going down here for vortex lucifer going to be happy with that he trades out a a single longbowman and the palings i think did the the longbow that die issue palings and then as it died the palings go up and now the body <laughs> the body stays there guarded by the palings i think that's what i think that's what's happened i'm pretty confident that that's what has happened that is a weird bug now the palings just stay there forever because the body's staying there forever. Okay, all right, I like it. Um, but yeah, one of the things to remember is that you've got to just be so on the ball when you're playing against the English player because it's highly likely that they're just going to be massing up longbows. And if you make any mistakes, um, then you will be punished severely. But we actually see instead of plus one coming through first, it's going to be siege engineering coming through for Lucifron. Uh, interestingly, no outpost coming forward yet either uh, from these guys. So playing it a little bit, uh, I, I would almost be tempted to say a little bit old school. Uh, but longbows going to be moving in again. You can see Barbican going to be firing down on them. Villager going to be falling back, manages to survive. A couple of horsemen going to be coming out here for Vortex. Vortex going to be copying a whole bunch of arrows in the face and another wolf coming in from the center. But uh, more longbows going to be coming out. Numbers for Lucifer are not looking the healthiest at this moment either. Uh, so we'll have a look and see what he's up to. He's now getting plus one. So has only added a handful of farms in. It's stacking up a bit of food at the moment. So macro is still a little bit off. Uh, but yeah, okay. Now we, now we do finally see that the outpost coming down. Um, so... I'm surprised it's only one villager. Normally, you, you, you'd like to see two, but I guess it makes sense. Uh, and he'll probably be looking to take stone shortly as well. Uh, but uh, with this, um, he is going to be able to put a pretty decent dent in uh, in the units that uh, his opponents have got out. But Vortex has got a decent number of, of cavalry units here uh, going up against the uh, the longbowmen there's there's actually not a, a, a number of longbowmen here that is at all threatening uh and as a result because of the lack of outposts as well as the, there's no spearmen despite there being a barracks was there a barracks no there was no barracks i must have been blind the, despite there being uh you know the, the outpost was was not going up and now we actually see a little bit of a, a difficult spot here because vortex has just quelled the rush now this is where it sort of gets difficult because the whole concept of english is built on tempo it's the idea that you're able to turn your your fast age up and your longbow mass into a a nice bit of tempo uh but uh here we can see the horsemen horsemen have got plus one okay now it's making more sense plus one range defense as well as plus one ra uh, melee attack this is a pretty smart coming out from vortex i didn't actually expect this i was wondering why those horsemen were so um were, were so uh, effective in that scenario just there and, and they absolutely seem to do very well they stacked up a lot better than what you would normally expect and he's uh, he's taking a whole bunch of damage he thought he would get away with it the sneaky guy he thought he thought he would get away with the palings crush but uh palings crushed him 
that is uh, that is interesting to see. But now it looks like he's just going to be falling back towards that position. Interesting, the palings didn't um, didn't get cancelled either, uh, which is twice that we've seen that happen. But now, once again, these horsemen going to continue running down, uh, and uh, villagers still yet to come out to this outpost. Lucifer not looking the best right now, throwing away just complete longbows, and a second villager going to be coming out, dropping down a barracks in the middle here, deciding I think I'm going to need a barracks. But it's it's the upgrades that are really making the difference here. He's got the plus one ranged attack, but that's something that you expect the English player to have. You don't expect the Chinese player to have plus one ranged defense, not at this point in the game. Maybe about 10 minutes, I'll give you that. But that first fight, I didn't expect him to have that, and that made all the difference. It, w it was significant, uh, and I guess that just goes to show, you know, you cannot forget your upgrades when you're fighting off these early English pushes like this. But now, Lucifer's going to be in a difficult spot and taps out because of it. So a very, very quick game here for game number four. And with that, it's going to be Vortex uh, that is uh, moving on well, uh, moving on to game number five. He's kept himself alive in this game. It'll be the next game coming up on the channel. Make sure you guys check it out. I'll catch you in the next one.